Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hang on. I might have us muted. No, I don't. Okay, cool. We are not muted. <laughs> this is fantastic. Uh, it is Monday morning for me. I am just now trying to uh, get my stuff together here, get my poop in a group, as they say. But I am very, very happy to be joined by Madhu and Natali from Red Hat here. We are going to walk through the uh, the joys of building uh, a application from nothing. the The idea here is to build uh, like an e commerce front end store, and we're gonna gonna take it from OpenShift to business. And I am an active participant in this business as a quote new employee. Um, and the do and or Madhu and Natali are going to kind of help me out through this, but they're going to show us the way. So without, you know, I'm Chris Short, obviously from Red Hat, you know, technical marketing manager. Uh, Natale, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience, please? Hello, my name is uh, Natale. I'm uh, from Red Hat, part of the developer advocate team. And my name is uh, Madhu Kulibali. I'm from France and I'm a part of uh, the solution architect. I focus on uh, developer experience on OpenShift. Wonderful. So, where are we beginning today on our journey here? Yes, maybe we can uh, start uh, with this introduction. So, today we would like to show to, to the people uh, how we can, uh, we would like to simulate a real use case of a developer team that has to uh, develop one uh, e commerce, one uh, e commerce store in uh, using microservices. And uh, we would like to show how to do this uh, directly on OpenShift using uh, an online IDE as a code ready workspaces. So we we're going to delve dr straight directly from the platform with this online IDE. And uh, we created on GitHub some an, an, an organization because we would like to create a wine store, wine e commerce. Uh, so we are going to simulate those three developers, those three people. So uh, Chris, Natale, and Madhu will be part of this uh, organization. And uh, we would like to, to code together with you to show how it would be uh, straightforward and uh, fast to develop directly from the platform. So we don't need to set up any ID. We don't need to set up any environment. We just go through Code Ready Workspaces, which is Red Dot product around Eclipse Share uh, pro ups, upstream project. And we, we try to, to build this e-commerce in those uh, two hours. Uh, we try to, at least. So, uh, yeah. We will do our best. Yes. <laughs> Remember, failure is an option on the stream, y'all. Like, like, we could get through this, and it could break in some horrible way. And it could be us opening a bug report after the fact. So that might, <laughs> might end up be the result of the stream. So just keep that in mind. Like, no big. Yeah. Yeah. Madhu, do you want to, to start with the, yeah. the introduction of the flow? Yes. So uh, one thing that we would like to add also is uh, the, the, the nice introduction of Natale is the fact that everything that we are going to show you, so running on OpenShift. So as you mentioned, ID, all the tooling, the database, all the services. So everything is running on OpenShift. So which means that as a developer, I will be able to really embrace all the cloud computing advantages. And we are going to, to show you how it's working. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share the screen uh, for starting with that, the inner loop, uh, developer inner loop. So I'm quite sure that you are quite familiar with that. So I don't know, Chris, for example, if you already heard about this, know about this. I know there is some uh, Twitch session also around uh, this inner loop. So, I mean, the inner loop is, uh, you know, a very valid thing in my opinion. Um, not many people I think are deeply familiar with it, but if like this, this image makes a very good sense of it, right? Like the, the, the developer is here to write some code, run some code, validate that code, debug that code and start over, right? So yeah. once that code is shipped to production, it is, you know, it can re-enter the loop, but <laughs> the loop is always the same. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, so exactly. So around this inner loop, so basically we have, um, it, it's kind of a process. So really the workflow around developer. So basically what the developer is going to do a lot of time in his life. Mm. So which means that in order to be able to create the application, we are going to, uh, we have this uh, iterative process to first, so take the part of the business logic uh, we take this part, so we implement it, so which means that we are going to code. Then when we code that, so we have to run it. And of course, from when you're using some framework or some languages, you will have to build it first, but basically you run it. Then you check that is everything it's uh, what you expect, is everything it's okay or not. So if there is any issue, so it's a bug and you're going to, to, to debug that and to, to find what's happened. And if not, so you go directly into the code, so take another piece, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and redo this process again and again. And of course, uh, the outcome of this process that you are going to do uh, many times, it's the application that you are going to build. And of course, when the application will be built, it will not be finished, because if there is any, let's say, bug or any uh, improvement that I have to do. So you are going to do again the inner loop again and again and again. Which means that everything that we are going to show uh, today is the fact that even if you are going to code in sa so on the cloud, uh, it's not going to change anything to that loop because it's something that you're doing, so let's say maybe currently inside your laptop or inside your organization. But when you're going to the cloud, we are really uh, show you that we have a plenty of uh, nice tool, uh, tools uh, in order to simplify the way and for you to get this uh, transparent and to, let's say the beautiful path to the cloud computing. Beautiful. Yeah, so uh, Nate, you want to, to add something on this, how we can uh, move forward? Yes, I think this is a very good introduction on the concept of how should be this loop in developing. Um, I think we can start showing uh, the use case, no? Uh, yes. So we, we, have, we say that uh, we are a software company. Uh, uh, we, our name in this example is the Red Wine Software, just because we, uh, we like Red Wine. And, uh, <laughs> and we are a member of three. Uh, if you have a, okay, we are, um, uh, Chris, me, and Madhu in this red wine software. So we are starting from scratch, right? And Nothing. we have from the yeah. from the you know from the business unit, from the from the management, we have this request of doing an e-commerce of red wine. Um, so how how, you, how we want to start this? Uh, um, usually uh, we start with uh, once upon a time <laughs> we used to start with some <laughs> monoliths, uh, you know, some. May awfully some JCOS containing everything, so we can have the front end and the can together. Uh, today we can uh, start the couple, the coupling things, and uh, think about doing uh, developing in uh, microservices. So since we are uh, three people, we are the developers, so we, we can split uh, the, the things. Well, so we were, we were thinking that uh, uh, Madhu can do a backend, uh, so maybe we can. Uh, if we have to do this e-commerce, we need some uh, front-end that uh, queries some back-end and that use some database. So this is the, the, the start. Uh, of course, we could start also from some diagram, uh, but just to give an idea, we, we, give, we, we want to do this uh, topology, this uh, architecture. Um, so if we had to start from scratch uh, from our computer, we would have to set up uh, any ID like Visual Studio uh, resolve all, all the dependency, um, give to other the other dependency and set up all the things and decide how to deploy this application. We can demonstrate that in OpenShift, we can do everything directly on the platform. So uh, Madhu will implement a backend, but before implementing it, he will code this backend in the code-ready workspaces, test locally. Test local means that he will test into a container inside code ready workspaces when the deployment would be good it can push this code to the platform so it can deploy on open shift so we will have this uh, kubernetes ready application just coded in the platform and deployed to the platform directly from the ide uh, and i will do the same thing uh, with a with a front end 
And then to all three together, we will uh, have some interaction about uh, having a pull request. Uh, if we do any change, having discussion, you know, when you develop, when you develop, you, you have lots of discussion around uh, how to implement things, uh, how to do tests, for instance. So we will start this, uh, this, uh, this job together. Um, uh, so I think we, we, Madhu, we, we can start with the, with the platform, uh, um, with the platform integration. Uh, since you are sharing the screen, maybe you can, uh, or I can start sharing the screen as you want. Uh, yes, maybe you can start sharing the screen and okay. then uh, moving and start to, to developing the front end. Okay. And of course, on this team, so Chris, you are uh, our uh, boss, our manager. So oh. if there is something that you don't like, something that you, you know that uh, is crash very okay. hard, so just uh, yes, tell us. And we yes. try to do oh, our I love this. This is going to be great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what just happened there? Tell me more. <laughs> How long to finish that task? Oh, yeah. yeah. Can, uh, can you make me host so I can share the screen? I, yeah, I'm going to do. We're, we're having to do the uh, host pass around because my Zoom settings. So Zoom settings aren't just the client settings, apparently, we learned uh, like late last week. There's this huge list of Zoom settings in your Zoom account if you're actually hosting meetings uh, that you have to toggle on and off stuff to uh, like let people share their screen. Who knew? The fun stuff. So yeah, we have to pass the host around to get screen sharing working. Just let everybody know what's happening right now. Yeah. So if you, uh, Madhu, I think you, you have to uh, click on my user. Yes, it's maybe... done. Okay. It is done. Perfect. So we can start. You have the control. You have the have power. The also, we have now just learned that if you retroactively change the setting, Zoom does not apply that to the current call. <laughs> <laughs> So if you can see my screen, no, we have uh, some somebody please, defined this please blow that up a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So yep. everyone can see this. Really simple. We want to do a, this wine store front end, back end. So those are two basically two microservices, two macro micro microservices, uh, and and a database, no, uh, because we want to have persistency uh, in containers. So uh, we will use OpenShift, and what we did, the, the cool thing we did is that we integrated GitHub authentication. So in this OpenShift cluster here, I'm going to log in with the GitHub uh, authentication. So this is me, because I already did the, um, the, the authentication. Mm -hmm. This is me logged in in the uh, OpenShift uh, with the GitHub integration, and me, Chris, and Madhu can log in in this cluster thanks to this integration. Uh, we can also be granular. We can uh, uh, allow only certain teams. We are a team of developers. Uh, Chris is our manager, so uh, the developers can log in. He can log in because he's a super set. So we can be really granular on that. And we have this integration in the platform, right? So this is our platform. Uh, what we have in the platform is the installation of code-ready workspaces. This is a normal user, so I can see all the projects that I have here. If I go to my administration view, this is just me. I cannot see all the projects. But if I go to an already opened, uh, you know, here as administrator, I can see all the projects. So yeah, I, I am the administrator on this uh, OpenShift clusters. Uh, I've done the uh, GitHub integration. So if I go to the out modules and I see uh, the content, you can see here, uh, not showing uh, uh, the secret is uh, in the not another secret. So mm -hmm. I have a GitHub integration. This is the client ID I mapped. So this is the organization. Only people belonging to this organization can access to the to the clusters. Um, and this is cool. The only thing, uh, the, the other thing is cool is that we basically installed the code ready workspaces through an operator. So uh, going through operator app, we installed code ready workspaces at Thanks to the CR, to the custom resource, we can we could define a code-ready installation, which that would be uh, in in this case it's a code-ready installation with an OAuth integration. So the GitHub this means that the GitHub user is also logging in in the IDE with the multi-tenancy, 
and we're using the TLS mode. This is a setting that you can put in your operator, right? So just straightforward, we have an operator here. How do we access to our clusters, uh, to our IDE? So all the developers should have access to this route of uh, code ready. So this is the route that we need to access uh, uh, code, ready, uh, code ready workspaces. If you see, when I click here, I need to authenticate again with the GitHub, GitHub integration. So here I'm logging in with a, a GitHub integration. Uh, I'm authorized to access uh, uh, this because I have this integration. And finally, I have my code ready workspaces. So um, this is the, the online IDE. If you uh, haven't seen it, it it's uh, uh, um, the project, the upstream project is Eclipse Chef. In Red Dot product code ready workspaces, uh, that you have uh, uh, on OpenShift. When you have OpenShift, you have automatically code ready workspaces installable. Uh, you can pick your favorite uh, programming language where to start with. So if I need to develop in Java, I can start with uh, Maven, with Quarkus, with Spring Boot, uh, for Node.js, C++. All the favorite programming language runtimes are here. Uh, for you can also create your custom one. So if you want to add, for instance, a COBOL workspace, somebody uh, in the IBM Twitch, we were talking about the COBOL workspaces. It was uh, an idea. Uh, <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. You can, you, can, you can create a container that represents your workspace. So for this example, I want to uh, be in charge of implementing the uh, front end. And I want to do this on, in React. React is very popular today to creating a front-end application. So I'm going to start from a, a Node.js uh, uh, workspace. Um, and I can also customize this experience. So I can create one workspace here. Uh, I can select my plugins that I want. So this is the, my working workspace. I can select my favorite plugin. Some of those plugins are already enabled, uh, like the TypeScript support. But for instance, uh, I would like to have the OpenShift integration in my uh, IDE uh, because I want to uh, start interacting with the platform. I want to deploy directly to the platform, right? So I can, I can pick several uh, plugins that, uh, that I like. And the most interesting thing here is that you can pick, uh, you can also customize this experience and we can show after that with a dev file. This dev file, it's, uh, it's like the Docker file for the code ready workspace workspace. So if you want to customize this experience in this Node.js, you can add the run configuration here, like, you know, the dev test build, uh, you can add the uh, custom uh, uh, commands, debugger, you can add also custom uh, and additional plugin from Visual Studio because uh, it supported the Visual Studio ecosystem of plugin. Uh, so you have, you can also, uh, you can really customize this experience. So for the moment, what we are doing here is uh, sending this and running this workspace. So this, this workspace will run. Um, what happened under the hood when you start uh, from Contrary workspace is a workspace. Basically the plot, this is, uh, since there is an integration with OpenShift, there will be uh, the creation of a container, a workspace, uh, that will contain an agent that will connect to the code ready workspaces uh, master, let's say, uh, the controller. And, and this will create the connection between uh, uh, the workspace pod with the uh, code ready workspaces uh, pod. It's similar to Jenkins' master slave, you know, uh, architecture. We have a master controlling several uh, uh, pods that will be your, uh, will represent your uh, workspace. When this job here is finished, so uh, when this uh, job will finish uh, about pulling all the images that, that is, uh, they are needed, you have a Visual Studio, you will have a Visual Studio like uh, uh, look and feel. So this is uh, because uh, about the, the TIA integration that is available also in Visual Studio. So you have a, a Visual Studio like experience uh, with uh, uh, autocomplete of the code, the plugin integration, but directly on the platform. The only thing that you need is having this URL. Somebody will give you this URL. This URL will uh, represent your uh, IDE. And you can start coding from uh, this URL. So uh, as we have seen, uh, after the initialization of the workspace, there will be the initialization of the UI. Uh, in the while the UI will load, 
uh, code editing workspaces uh, will uh, import some, uh, uh, in this case, it will import some uh, default project, some uh, skeleton of Node.js application, because this dev file was configured like this. And, and it will also uh, download the language runtime. So uh, if, if we want the autocomplete, if we want to syntax highlighting, in, like in this case here, um, this is, is because there is a, a language feature uh, uh, support. So the, uh, the IDE will, uh, will just uh, provide that. And here I'm starting from scratch from a, a, a skeleton of Node.js application. Uh, interesting that I have some skeleton code. This is an Express application I can, I can run. And the, the interesting part is that I can uh, start running tasks. So what means running task? Is that this application has some dependency, for instance, and uh, some uh, to, to, to solve. So I can start running all some already configured task. Um, so I can start downloading all the dependency. I can start uh, uh, installing new component. For this example, we will uh, do a React application. So I will need to start new component. And the cool thing is that you have a, an embedded uh, browser here. So I can test locally. This is, uh, exists only in my workspace. It doesn't exist in OpenShift yet. Uh, when I'm ready, I can deploy everything with the uh, integration of the OpenShift connector. This connector here and the Kubernetes connector allows you to list all the components in OpenShift, create new components, so I can code test, build, and deploy in OpenShift directly from this uh, uh, UI. So this is uh, something uh, uh, cool that we can do. And uh, since uh, I'm in charge on the, um, I'm in charge on the front end, and I would, I would like to use uh, uh, React for, uh, for doing this front end, uh, the, the another thing that I can do is uh, uh, using a terminal. So I can, use this uh, already configured uh, task that I can start like this. I can also uh, kill the task with, the, with this uh, uh, feature like terminate task. So when I, when I have some running task, I can kill this task. Uh, or I can kill from here, just killing uh, the tab like that. But I have also, if you look at it here, I have a, a shell. So this is my shell. I can run all the command that I need. I can do the uh, npm start, and uh, I can do all the things that I need, like uh, uh, node uh, with the application. So I can redo the same thing I did before, like before, from, but from a command line. This is, uh, this is cool, so I can also start bootstrapping uh, uh, my uh, uh, React application. And Madhu in the backend will do the same thing. So we can work in parallel, no? Uh, Madhu can bootstrap the query corpus. I can bootstrap the, um, the, um, the React application. There is this command here, uh, npx. So because here I have, uh, uh, in this workspace, I have a node, I have a npm, uh, I have a npx. So I can, I have all the command that I need to have a node application, which is ready also to, um, to, to bootstrap a uh, React application. So if I want to uh, create a, a React application, uh, npx create React app, and if I want to create a name for this, this is gonna create a, a directory where, where I, will, I will work. This is going to download a lot of data. It's like starting a new application downloading all the component. Uh, in the while, uh, I can have a, so I can have a React application with this uh, skeleton front end over here. Um, I think in the while we can uh, go to the Madhu initialization of the backend. So here I'm initializing a React front end. We can initialize the Quarkus backend, and so we can uh, iterate on that. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. So can you make me host sure. to be able to share the screen? Hey. Here we go. Perfect. Now, do you see my screen? Yeah. Right. 
So everything that, uh, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing that Natalie is just doing, so through Cadredi workspaces. So once again, I don't have to install anything into my local laptop, which means that if I have to, for example, to move from Node.js to, uh, to Maven, for example, to Go language, so I don't have, you know, to fight with my environment to change my uh, class path, to change the path, to change the version of my Maven from my Java and so on. So to do all this uh, gym around my configuration. So now I just have to ask for something and I will have that uh, right now. It's a bit like you are with uh, everything about uh, Netflix or any, yes, uh, the video on demand. So you would like to see an horror movie at uh, so in the morning. So now it's possible, which was not the case uh, several <laughs> years ago, which is quite, uh, yes, quite nice. And yes, of course, I love horror movies. So let's go for the Quarkus backend. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to select the Quarkus. So from the Quarkus here, I'm going to edit uh, this uh, workspace. To be able to use the same uh, plugin, so get the uh, OpenShift connector plugin. And uh, only that, that I'm going to have, I'm going to take it and double check. So I'm save it, which is okay. Now I have Quarkus, so it's going to run. And in a couple of times, so, we are, so I'm going to have, uh, so my workspace, which is the new local for me as a, let's say, cloud developer. And uh, from this, uh, you will see also in the second part of uh, this switch that I will be able to share all my configuration with Natalie, and Natalie will be also able to share this configuration very simply uh, using the dev file. So, which means that everything that I'm going to configure, all my room, which all the tooling that I got for doing my quirky stuff, even if I need to custom things, so I will be able to share to anybody who would like to use it and we will uh, show you how to, to do that. So in the meantime, so, uh, so in the meantime, so we're going to, of course, that uh, it's going to wait on that. Ah, yes, the live demos. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> but I have a backend just here, up and running here, but uh, I mean, yes, let's say it's a live demo. We have the challenge to doing everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. So let's yeah. do it. And we do it live. That's how we roll here. Yes. We can so, show maybe. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. I mean, just, just explain what's going on here real quick, right? Like it's, it's, it's creating a developer workspace with all the plugins that you need. And you can create these things in advance and then share them out with everyone else with all the right connections and plugins and everything else so that your developers essentially get into the GitHub org get a workspace and they're off and running right like that is the process here to get your own workspace that's pretty powerful and efficient stuff in my opinion yes yes because it's about uh, so the time and the amount of time that uh, when i work as a developer when i have to switch to project and even if it's not switching to project but just to be able to uh, maintain stuff so I have a pull request, I have a ticket about a bug, so I need to work on this bug. So it's a really a small bug, it could be something very simple, but the time that I consume in order just to, as I mentioned, to change my Python version, to change all my libraries version, to be sure that I will have the right environment to fix that bug, which is going to take me really just a couple of minutes, then I push it, and then I need to change again all the things that I have into my laptop. Just think the fact that now when you got a pull request, for example, you will be able to attach a dev file to that pull request, which means that if someone, a developer, needs to fix it, you just have to click on one button. It's going to have all this uh, workspace up and running. And of course, if you need to, for example, to build uh, something or to package something or to do any action, so you don't also have to also remember exactly so how I'm working with uh, Node.js, so it's npm Node.js or npm init, npm start, so I don't remember 
what are the parameters that I need to put into this application. So everything that, uh, that, that you have this question, so you really be able to just capitalize that, put it into one config file, which is the dev file, and then consume it. And anybody could be able to consume it. So you're doing the job once, and after that, uh, you can uh, really consume that a lot of time. And uh, it's exactly the same context that we, the same concept that we have with a container, right? We build exactly. the container once, and after that, you just use it and push it into different environments and consume it uh, anytime that is needed. And it's exactly the same concept that we got, and we put it at, in the end of the developer, which is quite powerful. Really yes, quite like I can't. I can't tell you, right, like uh, 20, 2011, 2012 ish, like the, the, the challenge of just getting a dev environment set up so that you could start working, right? Like you'd spend a week, maybe two weeks, if you had bad documentation about how everything glued together, right? Like getting just a dev environment working, right? Like they talk about this in the Phoenix project and the Unicorn project, just mm. getting your development environment working has always been a challenge for the industry. We've given people like a way to do it, set it and forget it, right? Essentially, right? Like you do it once and it's repeatable and it's consistent and it gets upgraded uh, in mass, not, uh, you know, oh, I upgraded to this version. So now everybody else has to upgrade to this version, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's a lot easier to manage this way. It's a paradigm shift for sure, right? Like you're doing everything in a browser now, but everything behind the scenes is connected and glued together and we're going to work. Well, exactly. So quite good, quite powerful. So in the meantime, to get this discussion, so as you can see, I have my uh, environment up and running, and I'm going to start uh, as the same thing. So we are going to use Quarkus. So Quarkus is the next gen Z Kubernetes uh, Java uh, framework, which really focus and really performance for cloud develop cloud native development around container. Because of course, I've, we are going to use JVM. I'm going to see that it's still Java, but we are going to have really cool stuff around this framework. So let's start. So here, so by default, uh, I'm installing uh, the plugin, so the Quarkus plugin uh, here. So by default, the Quarkus plugin, of course, it's installed. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to generate a new Quarkus project. So to generate the new Quarkus project, so as you can see, I uh, uh, execute the, the Quarkus plugin. So in the bottom here, you have activated yeah, Quarkus. Yeah. In the bottom uh, right, so you see the little spinning thing. Here. Or yeah. bottom left, I'm sorry. Yeah, and yeah. left also. Yes, right, left. So there is some, uh, I'm not sure that I, oh, I can. Uh, yes. There you go. Okay. Yeah. You can't really highlight it, but yes, it is It is yeah. there. It is spinning. Just to show you that like Quarkus is getting, you know, all the libraries are being pulled down, all the images are being pulled down. Off you go. But if you see, Madhu was able to bootstrap the Quarkus application because there is already a, a run task uh, from the plugin that allow you for the React one, for instance, we did it manually, but what we can do is now define a dev file with some run configuration like uh, bootstrap uh, React uh, app, uh, and we will be able to do like Madhu from the UI. So we don't, need, we don't need to go through the console again to bootstrap React. We can do from... Uh, from, from the UI if we program this in the dev file. For Quarkus, is already there, but this when you want to extend things and add things, you can do through that dev file. Yes. Yeah. One touch updates. Yes. Yeah. So add, now add, it's... add a whole language to your environment, one touch. Yeah. yeah. So now it is OK. So let's start with uh, this part. So I create the Quarkus project which could be a maven. So let's say that we have the org, which is called re red wine. Rewind, for Rewind. Sure. Uh, the project that we're going to create, it's uh, the inventory. So rewind inventory. We are going to use the version one snapshot. I can give it like this. The package is rewind. My API and resources will be wine resources. I click on OK. So here, as you can see, so from Quarkus, so I'm going to have a lot of uh, different extension from Quarkus, which is going to help me so directly to select which one is available from 
this framework. I'm going just to use use it, take it, and it will be quite fun. So, as as the manager quote manager here on this call, that Amazon Alexa one, uh, we need that in the next version, so people can order their wine via voice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So the one that is uh, required, it's uh, the rest easy, of course, rest easy, because what we are going to, to do is uh, to create so microservices. And as I mentioned, so Quarkus is really focused on uh, Java, uh, for Java developers to code Java application into the cloud. And everything is on the cloud, so it should be a services, so not necessarily microservices. I think we can have some uh, debate on that. But basically, I want to, let's say, to avoid debate. So let's say services. So that's why this one is, requi is required and is there. So the one that we are going also to use, it's, um, I'm going to use, which one I would like. I would like, maybe I can add them later. But I will have to use my JSONB because I would like to change and to get some API using JSON. And for now, let's take and let's try this with this one. So now everything is set up. I generated my project. I added it into my uh, current uh, version here. So now I have my uh, rewind. So inventory, everything is set up for sure. And what we are going to do here, so as you can see here, so I have one resources. So this is the only class and the only piece of code that I need in order to deploy microservices. I think it's quite awesome because I don't have to create any application. I don't have to create, let's say, different things. I just have to create these resources and directly I'm going to consume that and that's it. So what I'm going to do here, now, so I'm going to go to my uh, Rewind Inventory Services and I'm going to run that application. So Maven Compile, so Quarkus Dev. And I'm going to use the dev mode on this, uh, on this compilation, but uh, let's see. So here it's going to come. It's going to, of course, build uh, my application. I think nothing very different. Uh, of uh, the fact that you're using uh, Java, yes, Maven Java application. So it's going to download everything. It's going then to build everything. So it's, it's saying that there is the port, uh, the debugging port that we are not going to use uh, yet. Let's wait a bit. So it's taking everything from Maven. And now I have my Quarkus so up and running. So this one, this one, I'm quite interested on this one. I will open it. Just there. So this one is uh, my new uh, application of Quarkus up and running. So one um. thing which is interesting, it's the time, the startup time that I have just four seconds, which is something that for some not competitor, but different uh, framework around microservices are quite, let's say more longer around that. Yeah. But Quarkus is really, really powerful because there is a lot of things that uh, at the startup time, so usually in the Java, the startup time, so you have all the reflection things, uh, you have to parse uh, the code in order to, uh, all, I know, to parse all annotation and to transform them into methods. You have to do a lot of things like this when you start up a, a JVM a, a classic, let's say Java, Java application. And all these things, it's uh, sometimes that you are going to have. So I don't know if you um, if you if you have a look some sometime. But when you have an application who don't um, use and consume a lot of resources, you have a big pike of resources at the startup time. And after that, you have let's say the normal uh, the normal uh, consumption of the resources. The thing is, uh, what is important is at the startup time, there is a lot of things that what we do with Quarkus, we move that part during the build time, which means that everything that is not necessarily to have at the startup time, you do it at the build time, which means that now with Quarkus, you will be able really to be able to, to achieve a really quick uh, startup 
and uh, using also less resources, which is quite awesome. And we can have a look on the resources that we are going to use. So when I'm going to push an open shift, it's really, really nice. So here, as you can see here, so I have my application and from this application, I expose the path hello. So I'm going to expose this pass hello, so which is there, and I have my hello, and I'm quite happy with that. Yes. Yeah. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just I would like to... to I would like to focus on that. We, did, we didn't have to set up any Kubernetes ingress or OpenShift right. routes, no? So we're working on an IDE that automatically created the one OpenShift routes that is going through a workspace. For, for us, it's transparent. We could even not, don't know anything about OpenShift. We are developer. We are focusing only on the code. Everything is out of the box. So this is another interesting thing of the integration through the platform about Kubernetes workspaces. Yes, because this thing, I, I, I could be able to share it, uh, for example, with you. So I don't know if, Chris, we can share it into uh, the, uh, the Twitch chat. Yeah, you can. Yeah, go ahead. I, I mean, yeah, drop it in there. Let me. Uh, if you drop it in the chat here in Zoom, I can pop it into the uh, Zoom, the the Twitch chat. If you don't have it open. Yes, but I'm just looking for the Zoom chat. I think I have to. Yes, there, there. There, there you go. There, yeah, there, it's there, gonna be there, there, hiding there. elsewhere. Here. Or just go to the Twitch channel, drop it in yourself. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Incoming. Actually, let me make sure I get to it first before I drop it in Twitch. So just get this uh, link. So go to the uh, hello, oops, to the uh, hello uh, REST API, and you will be able to see the hello API. So what I'm going to do, so in live, I will be able to code my application. So which means if you remember about when you have to code, run, and test the application, in the Java uh, way, usually what you do, you code, then you build your application, which is going to take time, then you run it, and then you test it, which means if you have any issue, so you have to first, so basically control C to kill the process, code again, build again, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. which means that you are going to consume a lot of time. And also, this also, um, uh, involve, uh, let's say, um, one consequence of that is that that we do what I call the mini waterfall, which means that as a developer, because I don't like waiting, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to code a lot. I'm going to code a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, maybe during one hour, maybe during two hours to be able to code a lot to be sure that I reduce the time that I have to build because when it's building, so of course it will depend about the size of the application, but it could take a long time. So which means that when I've got some issue, so just think about how many time I will have to dig and to investigate into one hour of code. So I don't know how many line of code to see where come from the problem, etc. So everything that you have seen with the exchange of of um, so the waterfall to uh, let's say the DevOps to have uh, to accelerate that to have some iteration and to be able to accelerate it uh, very quickly. It's something that usually so I think it's depend about uh, Java developers and how they like to build. But yet sometimes to avoid the build phase, so you code a lot, which means that when you have to debug, you spend also a lot of time to be able to debug. But if you are able to code small and to test it very quickly, if there is any problem, you will be more reactive on that, uh, which is something that we are going to, to, to try right now. So I'm still in Java. It's really important I'm still in Java. Here it's hello. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, so hello to my, to my manager, which is, so hello, Chris. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so automatically, because it's a web browser, so it's going to save for me which is also important because if I got any, let's say, network issue, so at least my code will be saved and I'm not going to lose everything. So it saved it. And now when I'm going to go there, I'm just going to refresh my web browser. And as you can see, oh, hello, Chris. Hello. So now 
I have this up and running, which is really, really awesome. And as you can see, you can see here that I have something called the hot replace, which is taking so uh, one second. So everything that I'm, go I'm going to do, so I will be able to code, to add things, et cetera. So when it's saved, I just go to my, uh, to my uh, application, I refresh it, and now I will be able to, to add the results. So I don't know, yes, as you, so I, 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 I was, so I'm still a Java developer from a couple years, so more than 10 years. And I quite remember that in Java, sometimes I was a bit jealous about the JavaScript uh, people who just have to modify something and to just have a look on the website so it's working well. And then uh, they're going to move forward and to be able to code quickly that I will be able to do. But right now with Quarkus, I got exactly, let's say, the same feeling, the same yes impression that now I have the power and I can be more efficient than ever which is really, really cool for a Java user. Really, really cool. So uh, what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to cheat a bit because what we want to do is to create our uh, wine resources. So from the wine resources, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new resources there. So as you can see, my uh, environment is still up and running. So I'm going to create different uh, classes. So just one classes, so my wine.java. I'm going to use, uh, let me hear, so I'm cheat a bit. It's just because there is a lot of like cheater to code. type, and I'm <laughs> a bit lazy. And I mean, control C, control V, it's a part of a developer work, right? I think it's one of the favorite, uh, yeah. one of the favorite commands that we use as a developer. Which is, yes, which is really, really great. But with attention, with strict attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you can, you can be a copy paste developer, but you can also be a very, very insecure copy paste developer. Too. Yeah. <laughs> so you better pay attention. You better pay attention what that control V or command V is doing for you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I'm going to add, so from my Quarkus, done from my pom.xml, I'm going to use my uh, GPS, I'm going to use uh, Hibernate uh, ORM in order to manage my database. I'm going to use as a database, uh, maybe not for starting, let's be, yes, let's be crazy. I'm going to use a Postgre database. And I've already ordered the other one, which is okay. I'm going to push it. So automatically it's going to add this, the right libraries into my uh, pom.xml. And here, I'm going to double click here. So here it's a simple entity. So from this entity that we would like, it's a wine that we are going to map with uh, the table wine. And from this table, we are going to have so an ID, a name, and an origin. And after that, you have the, 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 the set of um, get set and uh, something to be able to, to, to get some, uh, yes, to display what is inside our, uh, our data. Yeah, so a simple data model that we can map through an API uh, REST communication. So the idea in this example is that we have an API REST that we can query from the front end. So the front end will query uh, asynchronously this API uh, call REST uh, API endpoint and show an HTML, uh, and this part will be done by React, showing live change or live content from the database. So actually, we have three components, the front end, the back end, and the database, because through Hibernate, we are automatically creating and generating the tables in the Postgres database uh, within the same works. We are working still in the same workspace. Yeah. And as you can see, as mentioned, so uh, at the beginning, we add uh, the JSON uh, B uh, to map uh, some, uh, some file into a JSON uh, REST API. And then we add the AIBRNet one for all the JPA stuff and the Postgre database here. So now that I've done that, so from my wine, 
resources. I'm going to add uh, this one, this function. I'm going to get the hello world that I'm going to share. And this one, I'm going to add this as an API. Uh, so API while here we are going to display so under uh, the comments so while and we are going to map it uh, we are going to retrieve all the data from my database coming from while and sort it as we have an origin so everything it's okay here the thing that i need to do it's uh, basically to be able to add uh, the configuration of my database. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new project from OpenShift. So now I'm switching just to OpenShift because I need a database. And of course, to get a database, as I'm lazy, I'm just going to ask to the platform to provide me a database. This is so not, here, not, I would say this is not laziness. I would say this is smart. Yeah, <laughs> this is, this yes. is an effective use of your time. Laziness yes, yes. is good for software <laughs> developers and systems engineers. Absolutely. Exactly. Because I'm, I'm, I'm really, really lazy, which means that I try to optimize everything and to be sure that I will be able to do my work easily without you know, waiting, etc., etc. But I prefer to say that I'm lazy, that I'm smart, but uh, you, understand. you understand. You are a smart, Which lazy person. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the database, I would like to uh, require so a Postgre database. And of course, an OpenShift. So everything it's about so configuration. So I'm going to add my uh, inventory database with the password so inventory uh, the username inventory the password also inventory is that why is that and the database yes typo? inventory yeah oh, here so i'm going to specify just uh, some generic stuff here i provision my database oh i need to create so wrong uh, wrong project. Let me first create a, uh, a right project. I'm going to do exactly the same. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, the, so the one we, you were working is the one where Code Ready Workspace is, is creating the workspace pod. So we're working on a pod containing containers. Uh, you are working in a Maven pod there. And that is the pod that yeah. Code Ready Workspace is using. So it contains the Code Ready Workspace agent connecting to the Code Ready Workspace master. So this is uh, the working project for the IDE. Uh, the strategy to deploy the workspace can be many. So you can deploy the workspace in uh, one single project within the platform. So all the developer workspaces will be in just one project, or they can, can be in a specific user project. It depends on how you configure the custom resource when you install code ready workspaces. OK, so now I'm in the right project. So now I provision the database, which is OK, which is awesome. So now what I'm going to do is just to use this uh, information here. Here to uh, define a list of uh, key value. And all the key value that I'm going to use here, it's uh, basically to map uh, my database URL. So the driver that I'm going to use, of course, the user, the password. Uh, so here is some definition that I'm not going to use. And then where I'm going to enable that part just after the end in order when I'm going to push it into OpenShift, so, but just for the test, the local test. So inside my uh inside my uh, workspace so i don't need all of them if you if you point to the jdbc url this one specific if you can uh, yes. uh, talk about this this is a uh, the service no yes it's, uh, so basically it's uh, i'm going to connect it using jdbc uh using the postgre so a driver and then here i'm going to specify the uh, the services the date the service the database services that i just creating here so the name of my services is inventory database 
So I mentioned here inventory database dot. So from my project wine inventory. So rewind inventory. And I'm going to specify here just I'm using the services, which is the host name directly from the service discovery inside OpenShift. So this is quite uh, interesting because if you are not um, inside OpenShift, so I'm developed outside OpenShift into my laptop, I will have to create some route, for example, or to use some load balancer or to open some node port in order to access to my database outside OpenShift. But because it's, I'm inside OpenShift, I will be able just to use uh, Evan as a developer, uh, all the uh, Kubernetes API and Kubernetes uh, features, which is great. So this is this. Uh, I've got the port of the database and the name of my database. And everything that I've got is here, so it's defined here. So what I'm going to do, I have a double check from this part with starting everything. So just, oops. Which is uh, the maven here, my quick project here. So this one we can just use that. Are you relying on Quay for anything right now? On Quay? Yeah, Quay.io appears to be down at the moment. Uh, uh, the, uh, no. This, okay. this uh, bootstrap, no? It's a yeah. very, very nice uh, follow-up next step. Because uh, if you enable the Tecton uh, pipeline plugin uh, from right. Code Ready, you can have uh, also a Tecton pipeline, which can also be launched in the platform. And this can uh, push the image to Quay.io. So if the container is secure, then you're going to deploy the app on the project. Otherwise, you, you, you won't deploy this. So you have three levels of uh, security. Mm -hmm. The workspace security, you test locally. The unit tests are local. Then you have the pipeline security. Uh, and after that, there is the final the project uh, security. So you do image promotion across environment through projects. So you can have uh, uh, a completely uh, developer journey starting from the IDE. And as you, as you said, we can have the integration with Quay.io, public Quay.io, uh, to, to, to scan automatically this image and ensure that we are not pushing uh, uh, image with vulnerabilities. Right. Yeah. There's the, 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 a couple, a couple things to unpack there, right? Like there's everything being on or in the OpenShift uh, cluster itself. Amazing. Right. Like that gives developers quite a bit of capability to do a lot of things in a safe way <clears throat> to, that includes standing up databases and you know, testing out service connections and everything else. But then to take all of that and then package it up, into an image so that other people can consume it or deploy it or whatever. Um, and putting it on Quay gives you a second layer of protection in the sense that everything is scanned on Quay using uh, Clear. So Clear is an open source project for security scanning images. That is a default feature for all Quay accounts, right? Like your image will get scanned uh, routinely and it will notify, so Quay will notify you of issues if it's not having issues, which Quay currently is. Um, so the, the beautiful part about all this is that even if somehow this gets through your entire pipeline and there's some vulnerable library or some vulnerable piece uh, or layer in that image, Quay is going to find it for you and you can put that in your you know private dev org and it's going to find it immediately uh, upon scanning that so that you can get a better idea of what's going on inside your infrastructure at all times from a security perspective. And that gives a lot of, you know, operations people like myself and former, you know, or InfoSec people, you know, I used to do that too as well. Um, a lot of comfort in the sense that, you know, the code that's being running from our repository has been checked over and over and over again. <laughs> it's consistently right, right. checked. Yeah. Also, the static code analysis with sonar or, or tool like that. So you can mix uh, multiple uh, right. source of verification. So yeah, you can and you can bake it all in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, sorry for that. So I think my copy paste, it's uh, lazy, but I have a lot of things to do because uh, basically what I've got here, it's some illegal uh, character oh, strings. Oh, the worst. Uh, the the bug. worst the bug. Things. <laughs> and, uh, yes, this is the worst bug that I can have. So what we can do in the meantime, maybe Natalie, you can start I, from yeah. doing the, the content. I, I, I could, uh, fix I could that. bootstrap uh, the React app. Yeah. Uh, so I will just stop sharing my screen here. Oops. Oh, copy pasting from notes. Yes. Oh, copy and pasting code from notes is brave. <laughs> yes, but it, it, it should work. It usually it works. Work, but uh, you know, yeah. yes, the copy yeah. paste is not yes the best yeah. one that we got. So there, Natalie, I put it on host. Change post. Okay, share screen. And you Voila. should have that. Voila, you, you should see my screen now. Yep. Okay, so the uh, initialization front on the React application took, took a while. Uh, at the end, it finished. And as you see, it is suggested me how to start this application. Uh, I, create, I created, the, I bootstrapped this application in the front end directory. Now it's suggesting that I can start the application for local testing uh, with NPM start. I can build the application for production. This means that React will uh, pack and build all the staging content that, I would, uh, 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 that would be served by the node uh, application. Uh, so I can do those tasks. Um, we, we can start, we can, we can test it. So this is the skeleton created by the MPX command. I have a, an, an example application that I can also test. So if I, if I do here, if I go inside and uh, I can do the NPM start of the application, this is gonna call all the plugin or the script for React. So it, like the Quarkus one, it will start the development, development uh, mode. And as Madhu was saying, uh, for JavaScript, it was really uh, easy to modify and test things. Even if here, it, this is a, um, a React application, no? so it needs some transcoding on file. I can modify the code while uh, and verify the code while, while I'm working. And this is, of course, the same OpenShift route that we were talking about. So I can see here in the embedded the terminal, I can see in a route, uh, I can see, so this is this one, this will be the route that will be used in my workspace. Uh, maybe I can also uh, pass in the chat. So we can have it. Uh, let me, let me there you pass go. It yeah. here. Uh, participant more chat. Okay. Yeah, this is the route in my workspace. So uh, what I can do now is uh, bootstrapping my application. So I have this skeleton. Uh, I have two choices. Let, let's say I'm a, a new developer for the Redwine software and my boss, Chris, said, okay, this is your task. Your internship starts now. Uh, go to uh, the manual and start uh, doing this front end. So I can consult uh, the official documentation on React on how to create uh, uh, things like a component, uh, a component class. It's similar concept of Java class. So you have uh, an object that you can manage and, uh, uh, and, and show in your uh, uh, static content in your uh, HTML files. Or I can work on a previous project. Uh, let's say uh, Chris uh, did uh, a, a, another project and I can have it on uh, Visual Studio. If you see here, this is Visual Studio code. It's really uh, it's the same, basically. It's the same look and feel, as uh, you see, uh, of Visual Studio Code. So, so you, if you are a Visual Studio Code user, it's really easy to switch to uh, Code Ready Workspaces. And let's say I'm starting from uh, uh, an, uh, an application, uh, similar application that was managing people and not uh, wine, for instance. But I, but I want to make my wine component. So in order to, to start doing this, what I have to do is uh, uh, I can start I can stop the, the execution of that, and I, I can start analyzing uh, my code here. Um, for instance, uh, this is uh, a node application. No? So it's an Express application, 
and uh, uh, I have this hello world here function that I, I don't need anymore, so I can change this. And uh, when, uh, uh, when I do my uh, React application, actually uh, I will uh, create this, uh, I will build the static content with this command that you see here, the npm run build. So if I do the same thing and I do npm, npm run build, this is gonna invoke React script for building the application. And this will create my building, uh, uh, my build directory containing JavaScript, CSS. Because if we look at the React application, I have some CSS uh, for the application. I have some, uh, uh, the main entry of this class that uh, in, in our case is, uh, the, was that uh, application, the static content. Uh, and I have all the uh, other components. In this directory here, I have this new directory, which is build. This build directory contains all my code ready to be executed from a browser. So I have uh, the JSON, I have uh, the HTML file, I have some JavaScript. Uh, this will be auto-generated. So we need to, um, to connect this to Node and uh, you know, when we want to deploy to OpenShift. But first thing we want to do here is uh, create a, a new component. So let's say we have to we want to, the, the goal is to query Madhu's API about wine. So I can create a wine component here. It's gonna be this wine JavaScript file. And I should create a component like uh, uh, following the, the documentation. So the main component I see here is a class extending the React main component with a render function. The render will basically print the HTML with some uh, dynamic content like this from React. Um, I can render basically in many ways, but let's say we start from the example for people, no? Uh, so what we can do instead of making people, uh, we, we can create a wine, uh, a wine library. Um, so I, I, let's say I was starting from this, uh, from this uh, class people and I created my wine uh, class here. Uh, so I, I can just copy like, uh, uh, like Madhu did before, you know, that we don't lose time. This is my wine component and I have to do some, some change here. Um, so the, the important thing is that I have a, a React uh, component imported. I'm defining my class. Then I, in this component did mount, I will do something like fetching an API. This API is going to be the URL that Madhu will give me. Uh, so in this case, it's something that uh, has been pre -prepa prepared, but uh, this will change. It depends on Madhu uh, work on the API. And basically, I will uh, uh, map all the field that I have from, uh, from, the, from the API and then create uh, 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 an image gallery. Here, if you see, I, I'm using this gallery, so I'm using some CSS com content. Another thing that I can copy from the previous example in, let's say, in my, um, in, in my Visual Studio is the CSS that I need. So I have this CSS here, like div gallery, div uh, over. It's something uh, because we want to do some e-commerce, no? So we want to make this uh, appealing. I'm going to ap append this on the main CSS file, saving the content. So now we have the CSS. Uh, I have the wine class. What I have to change here is the, my main entry. So I don't need, for instance, uh, any logo. I can remove this. Um, I can remove all this. I don't need to, to create uh, any, uh, um, any sample image. I just need to create, uh, to display this wine component. Uh, for instance, if we look at the example that we have here, we have just to define this wine component because it's some component we created inside the React application. So I can remove all the static content that I had before, like before. I can create this. So if everything is fine here, if I put everything fine, I will have the capability to test it out. So I created some... Um, some wine component uh, querying some API. For the moment, uh, it's, uh, it's querying uh, this API here, uh, but 
let's say uh, if we want to simulate a real use case scenario, let's say we don't want to display the image and we will do for uh, later on. So if we want to see that everything is fine, at least for testing, we can run again the npm the npm start and if everything is fine we will have uh, the content on the browser if there is any error we can investigate from uh, the output uh, uh, from the console so let's see this okay we have some error we did we forgot some divs and we're gone so we have uh, you see we have also the syntax check uh, I, I put an additional div entry that I didn't need it. So uh, it's not defined. This means I, I forgot to import wine. So I need to import this uh, uh, wine class. So I need to import wine. Uh, if I remember good, it's from a component. Let me check. From the component, yeah, from wine, yes. From a local, uh, this is a, a uh, relative path of the class. So this is uh, my wine list. Now it's empty because I don't have uh, any anything to show because this API content is not existing. But at yes. least I have my React application uh, uh, responding with some uh, uh, custom component here. So what I can do is like Madhu did. So I'm testing locally. Locally it works. That's pretty fine. Now I need to build it. Uh, I can do, uh, since there isn't any React integration uh, yet, I, I, I can do this uh, um, manually. So basically, I will run again the npm, npm run build command again. So this will generate again my build directory. And I can tell to the node executor uh, to, to express which is the module uh, for the web, uh, web serving the web content to look at this directory uh, in order to uh, deploy my uh, React application in OpenShift. So now I have this build uh, directory here. This is my main entry for the application, which is the app.js. I can copy uh, that content from uh, the front end. To, uh, to here, okay, let's check it out. Yeah, I have this build directory. Uh, and now what I can do is instruct Express to use this, uh, uh, this static content. So uh, there is also some auto-completion here for something, uh, but I can check the documentation in order to do it, or in, in, in my case, as new developer, I can see the other application, how it did. So basically, I can use uh, the starting content from the, uh, from the local folder. So I can use this function here, which is app use express static build. So this, this will use the build directory in order to create the application uh, uh, in OpenShift. I'm almost done to deploy. What I need to change yet is another file, which is the package JSON. Um, so I have the, here this package JSON, which is the, the main application. And then I have the, a package JSON in this main uh, level here. Let me, let me get it. Okay, now. So this is the main entry for a node application. Uh, in order to deploy to OpenShift, I need to tell to, to the container which is the main entry. So I can copy this. Uh, I can copy this uh, uh, from the root folder. Uh, so this is the, uh, the, the package JSON here. And I can start modifying it uh, because I'm not working in the, in the app app, but I'm working directly in this directory. So I can tell to do node app JS. So I'm telling to OpenShift do this. Why I'm doing this, I could also rely on, the, on this upper one. But React, uh, when it's bootstrap, it creates lots, lots of content of dependency. If I just want my, let's say, production built, I, I can do these things like uh, filtering the directory that I want to expose 
and tell to OpenShift and the Node Runner which, uh, which is the main entry that I want to start. So let's cross check that everything is fine as we did in the other uh, working example. Uh, we have a package JSON here. Uh, yes, we can, uh, we can just uh, write app JSON so it knows to work on, uh, on the current uh, folder. Now everything should be ready to, to start with the first uh, deploy in OpenShift. So like Madhu did, um, I have everything here that I can pack and, and send to OpenShift. I have to, uh, I can log into OpenShift because at the moment I'm logged in with a um, service account from CodeReady Workspaces. So what I can do is uh, uh, log in again in OpenShift and I can do with this command here. Um, I can use that token. So I don't need to put username and password. No, I have, I'm using uh, uh, GitHub integration. Uh, I can use the token that OpenShift gives, gives me from, from the console. Um, and I can retrieve it from here. If I do this copy login command and login with the uh, GitHub integration again, I can copy this uh, API token, which is my better token I can use uh, for logging in, in OpenShift again. I can provide this and I'm logged in as uh, the GitHub user. In fact, I can see my project that I was looking uh, also before. And I can, I can create a new project. So Madhu did the re rewind inventory. I do the rewind react, for instance, uh, as project. And in the project, I can start uh, uh, interacting with the platform. So this is basically um, a UI wrapper for the auto command line for OpenShift. I can do everything from command line because there is the, if you remember, we enabled the auto, the OpenShift connector plugin. But it's beautiful to, to do it from uh, directly from, uh, from the UI. So I can create a new application. Uh, the application name would be uh, Rewind, for instance, uh, Frontend. Um, so I can, here I have to tell to OpenShift, okay, start from a Git repository. I didn't have any yet. We have to create it on our Git repo and push it. Binary file. Madhu can do the binary file because he generated the jar file, the snapshot. I don't have any binary file. What I can tell, okay, go to, uh, go to some, uh, some folder here uh, and I can tell to go to the Node.js folder app folder. So this app folder, if you remember, contains package.json, app.js, which is the um, node main entry for the Express application, and, uh, and the build directory. This will uh, pack my application. Uh, I can give uh, the component name uh, here. So I am going to call it, uh, um, as we say, uh, Rewind uh, Frontend. And I, I have to pick my favorite runtime. Node.js in my case, uh, 12 version. So now I'm ready to push this in OpenShift. Uh, I can I can look uh, I can uh, see it from uh, from the UI. So I'm a developer. I'm going to the new created project, which is uh, uh, Rewind React. Uh, so when I come back here, I can push. If you see, this is not pushed. It means that I need to do auto push to push it to the platform. Uh, when I do this, I can do uh, the push command and. What I can do also is reviewing that everything is fine uh, with, uh, the, with, the, um, with the specification. Uh, OpenShift is, uh, uh, is using uh, um, auto, auto plugin to create the component. So uh, I, can, I can see what it does. Basically, uh, it created this config file here. Uh, and I see that it's using the correct uh, Node.js application, the correct version. Uh, but uh, it, it's using a wrong service. So I will need them to, to redeploy the component again because the real port for, 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 for Node.js, it's the 3000. 3, so I can do this uh, later. Let's see if in the topology, I have my Node application. What I need to change is just the service. So I can do, I can re-trigger the, the, the push. I can do auto push again. It should be able to, retrieve the configuration change. Now it should be able to change the service that we, that we serve on the port 3000, uh, not the port 8080. 
because the, the plugin automatically uh, did like that. When this uh, uh, configuration is finished, I can create a new URL. The URL is an OpenShift route that will be available in my, in my application. So let's wait that this is finished. Uh, let's go back to the topology view and uh, we can check if the service has been corrected. In the networking service, uh, not really. It's still the same. Maybe we can uh, help Aldo fixing it with uh, a change in the port. Because if you don't extract the component, which port to use, it's gonna pick a random default one. Uh, so I will use this. Okay, now the port is correct. This means that we can create our URL. So URL means uh, create an OpenShift route. So rewind route. I can push again this change. So the route will be pushed into the, um, the project. Now I should have my application uh, with some URL. If we check if everything is fine, we should be able to reach it. Let, let me check if everything is fine. Not yet. Okay, we need to investigate. So port 3000, logs, let's check the logs. Oh, there is an error, missing script start. Okay, I'm missing, so the container is basically crashing all the time uh, because I'm missing some, uh, some script uh, in, the, in the package. So I can come back and investigate what I, what I'm missing here. Uh, it can be some uh, definition in the build directory or in the package. Uh, I can check if I have everything here. Let me check also in the... Uh, I, I think it's on the, yes, the package JSON yeah. that you need the script. Uh, start. Yeah, yes, I need the node app here. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot to do this. So the application is uh, crashing. Uh, I can fix it very, very fast. So I can go here and uh, I can run a start script here. Maybe I can reduce this and I can do like I have in uh, Visual Studio. So the previous developer did it right. Package start, no app.js, okay. Okay, I guess there, there will be some comma here. Yes, everything is fine. So now uh, we can redo the same thing. So basically we can re-trigger uh, the change to the, to the, to the component. Uh, so we can do push from the dashboard, push from here. We can do auto push again. Uh, it will build the component again. Uh, so it will copy the package JSON and then we should be able to see our application run. When this will be finished, we will have the new application deployed here. Uh, so this would be uh, awfully working. It's really look like the auto really look like and make me think about Git push, for example. So you have all the configuration of your Git repository into the, 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 uh, the folder uh, dot, uh, dot, uh, dot git, so dot auto. And then you just have to repush that in order to let's say push the code into into OpenShift, which is uh, right. which is great. Right. So if you see, I, I was able to push the code like Madhu did. I'm working in my project, you know. I, I'm not sharing this with Madhu. But in order to have this front end working, I need Madhu to give me the URL in order where to connect with. Uh, but this is was cool to 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 show that I could test locally. I could build and I can deploy with a, a integration OpenShift connector that basically will, uh, it's a wrapper for Odo, the uh, developer CLI, uh, similar to OpenShift CLI, but uh, strict to developer use cases. So create push is like Madhu said, it's uh, like a git push. Um, so uh, what I need now, it's uh, Madhu to, to, to take yeah, action yeah. and give me the, the URL. Yes, Maybe, Madhu, in, 
in the wild, yes, it's it's always back. It, it, yeah, yes, yeah, no, yes, because it's more complex than just content. Yeah, content, content, react things. So, I mean, it's normal. Here we Maybe have a database. We can, we can we create data. a repo so our manager Chris can review the first. Uh, uh, awful code and then uh, uh, give some uh, <laughs> some vote on, on our uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> ship it the investors are hungry yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like we can do front end or uh, back end have some uh, react front end Gonna be private with our credential, uh, yes. And we can create the backend. So here we have the structure to initialize uh, all the things that we need. They're gonna copy because we will use it later. And uh, we can create the new repository as a backend. Sorry, I copy more. I will work this backend. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm going to uh, pass to you the control, Madhu, so you can uh, yep. share your, your script. Yes. My cost. Screen share swap. Yeah. Yes. yes. Awesome. Perfect. So. Here, here we are. So we we was uh, we was at the stage to my copy paste, and I got some uh, illegal characters. But I have uh, included it inside the code, so now everything is fixed. So just remember what I've done. So basically, I've created one entity uh, in which I'm going to collect the data from uh, the database to that entity, which is the wine entity with. Uh, uh, wine ID, the name and the origin with getter and setter. And then I defined uh, another, so I changed the path of uh, the rewind uh, backend. Uh, and uh, I add one uh, resources, which is uh, wines, in order to get all uh, the information from the database uh, sorted uh, by, uh, by origin. So uh, from there here, so what I've done, I redo my uh, Quarkus uh, dev uh, environment. And now what I have, I open it, so everything is fine there. And what I'm going to do here, which is uh, the name is, oops, rewind, rewind, so backends. But I got the hello, Chris. How are you? Just to Wonderful. see that. Yes. <laughs> Do you like uh, wine? I, I, I definitely need some. Yeah. <laughs> I Everybody needs so wine it, today. <laughs> so it's working fine. And then I'm going to add at the end my uh, wines in order to get some data. So from here, as you can see, you try to get some data. I got some error to saying that, yes, into my database, my database is empty and I don't have any data inside this database. Uh, so what There's no I, wine? Not yet, <laughs> not yet, <laughs> not yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to access very quickly because my manager is thirsty. So I'm going to access very quickly to my pod to go to the terminal, from the terminal, because it's uh, a Postgres. And just keep database. in mind, this is the actual terminal that like you can like Postgres commands happen in, right? Like yeah. this is a terminal into the pod that, yes. that hosts so, the database. Exactly, so I'm inside the, the database, as you mentioned here. I'm going to go to my database. So I have nothing there, so what I'm going to do I'm going to now not use Zimpad, but using Node.js as Natalie did, which is working fine. So I'm creating my yeah. table. So right now, I'm going to access it. And it's going to say that, oh, it should be a JSON things, and there is nothing, because it's completely empty. <laughs> and now I'm going to add my favorite one. And as you can see, Chris, we add just one wine from USA 
because that's, of, that makes perfect France sense. And Italy, I mean, but I, at least one wine from USA. Yeah, I, I I appreciate the shout out, but like there's sure. there's a handful of USA wines I would actually drink. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure my coworker Christian would give me a whole list of them as he's a big wine fan. But yeah, I there's like three I think that I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Which one? So, like, I like the sweeter stuff, um, but there's, uh, like, if if you like, I'm such a bad wine drinker that like I don't even know the brands half the time. Uh, I just know what the bottle looks like. If that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. like I had a great uh, Riesling. Um, it's like a short little stocky bottle with an orange wrapper kind of thing. Oh, cool. Uh, love good. Uh, Oh, actually, this past uh, weekend, I had a frosé for the first time. We made those. You know, that's kind of fun. Ice, strawberries, and sparkling rosé wine. That's all ah, it takes. It was nice. pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I'm not a huge wine drinker, but, yeah, that's I like I like the sweeter stuff, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are very nice sweet wine. Uh maybe more white wine or yes definitely wine. definitely on the wider area than yeah. the, than red but you know i mean you know i i like good wine if that makes sense right like if a wine is good i will appreciate it cool. but i'm not going to uh, go out and like pursue bottles to collect or anything okay But now you you are now I own this business on this business. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know yeah, nothing of wine. Now I must sell it. <laughs> <laughs> I have good advisors. We'll just assume that for the sake of the call. Fantastic <laughs> advisors in wine. I have Christian. He's somewhere. Yeah. Oh, I still have one little issue somewhere that I forgot, and of course. What I'm going to do, of course, I'm going to cheat into a working example because I should miss one thing into my code. Uh, what will be, I think it's on the pond.xml. Uh, and of course, it's a uh, real time one, and it's this one that is missing. So I just use the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, class in order to change my list into uh, JBoss, uh, into um, JSON uh, entry. So what I got here is this one that is not good. So I'm going just to push it here, as you can see automatically. So uh, Quarkus is going to rebuild because I'm changing the library that I need and it needs to take the library, install it, etc. So it's going to take it here. So now it's okay. And now it should work. Yes, brilliant. Cool. Perfect. Hello. Fantastic. Indeed. Data. So, yes. So now what we are going to do, so now we need to, uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to push that component so into OpenShift and doing exactly the same path that, uh, that um, uh, Natalie uh, did. So one thing and two things that I'm going to enable. So the first one, I'm going to enable the Uber jar. So in order to adjust uh, one jar with all the dependencies, especially everything that we have in the, uh, in the lib uh, directory of Quarkus. And the other one, I'm going to enable to use a core filter because of course, so Natalie is going to use my API inside Uh, not a reactive application, and we need to enable that features from uh, yeah, security reason to be sure it will be able to, to access to it. So now that I did that, so everything is fine and should be okay. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the terminal, into my rewind uh, inventory from the rewind. I'm going to In package and of course what I'm going to add it it's really it's made by let's say professional so don't try to use it at home yeah. basically to skip tests so of course never do that yeah no we prefer to do your, some your tests etc et but uh, yes for the sake of time <laughs> exactly just for the sake of time because yes usually of course I made all the tests the unit tests I test several times before to build anything so Of course. So in the meantime, 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to, to connect uh, myself also to, uh, to OpenShift using the OpenShift connector. So I'm going to uh, go there, retrieve that. I'm using the token. I'm connecting to uh, the cluster. From the token, I'm going to get the token from uh, Mad uh, GitHub SSO, which is there. Up, up here, here, and I'm connecting to my token to OpenShift. Which is great, which is okay. So as you can see, I retrieved my uh, Rewind uh, inventory here. And from the Rewind inventory, what I'm going to do, so it's still locked. So it's still downloading things. Hmm. So I don't know why, why. I don't know if it's a demo effect. Oh, the demo effects, but everything uh, is actually right now. yeah. It looks very frozen at the moment. Weird. Very weird. Wonder weird. if um, Max broke on the back end or something. Yes, I think so. Eee. Terminal. Let me try if it's not from my browser. I just refresh the browser. Also, sometimes it help. Yeah, the the idea of a, a browser constantly updating a, a thing that maintains state on the back end is still hard, right? Like that doesn't just because we put co-ready workspaces together doesn't make the back end stuff any easier. It just gives it a path. There you okay. go. Seems like I got that. So, uh, so let's back it again. So it's going to do this, and in the meantime, for sake of time, so new component that I'm going to add, which is the application, so rewind. Then I'm going to use the binary file. From the binary file, I'm going to use this one. So I'm just going to wait to get a binary file before mm -hmm. to pushing that, because if I push it, so I have something in dev, but it's not what uh, I would like to have. I really would like to have the latest version. Right. Hmm. And I don't know What's why it's there? taking time. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we could go dive. Do I have access? Yeah. yeah, I have access to the console. Let me go dive into the pod and see what we can find. <sighs> see. Check if it's this one. So use next workstop. Network connection closed. Yes. And Weird. Let me, let me just but that's an check. internal thing. Hmm. Yes. And let me check the other one. So this one. Live it's, debugging, it's the best. Yeah, it's part yeah. of the job. Ah, yeah. It's from the proxy. Let's check the Maven one. So nothing at the Maven uh, container. Okay. Uh, I should go to Maven. Let me check the other part. Uh, this here, Maven container. So nothing is there. That's so it's still... So Maven is waiting for something. Yes. Clearly. Because huh. I'm quite sure that Weird. in Maven everything is okay. There is anything on Maven. But no. Everything should be okay. Okay. So what we are going to do? I'm just going to uh, move into another uh, backend in which I've already built uh, my Jar application. So from the Jar application, what I'm going to do from this one, so once again, I'm going to connecting because I changed my workspace. So I'm in another environment. From this other environment, I'm going to uh, 
connect uh, using the token. So now I'm connecting there, which is uh, okay. What I'm going to show you here is that inside target, uh, I have my uh, backend up and running, which is this one. So now let's do again to add a new component. I'm going to add, uh, so, uh, sorry, an application rewind from rewind a binary. Uh, from the binary, I'm going to add, uh, let me add this here. So from project, I'm going to take here from the project. From the project, I have absolutely everything. So I'm going to take this one from project rewind backend uh, here. And I'm going to uh, create the component, which is inventory. Here, I'm selecting the mine, it's not Node.js, it's a Java, and from Java 11, and everything is configured. Oh. So one thing that I need to do, it's just from here, and here, what I need to change, it's just, so the URL that I have here, because it's something completely different that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use, let's try with uh, the rewind, Inventory, inventory from yeah, yeah. here, databases. And from here, it's not one, it's what I call inventory and inventory, inventory, inventory. So let me try to hmm. even, uh, yeah, to package from this one, uh, backend, so maybe package uh, minus D. Uh, let me just check this one here because I would like to use the profile uh, ah. prod. Uh, yes, uh, where am I? Weird. Okay. Ah. Let me type everything. Maybe it's also my copy paste. My be quarkus dot pro file equals to prod. Let's see if it's better now. Wow. Okay. That's weird Let's... that the copy paste didn't work. There was only one command. Yes, but it's from that pad. So it's the first time that I use because usually I'm use my VS code, but what right. I thought it's that I'm not going to use VS code to be passed into VS code. Right. So yeah, I'm going yeah. to do something different, but uh, yes, sometimes you just need to use the basic. Believe, believe in the native text format. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust the uh, OS X. <laughs> well, I mean, trust OS X to be pretty. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's going to give you pretty stuff first, not code stuff first. Okay, so sense. this workplace is working fine. And now uh, it's working fine. Oh, yes, because I just redo that, 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 rewind binary folder. So this here, I'm going to take the project uh, at folder, which is project here. Oh, oh at folder, Oops. So project rewind, because I already got an other there. Ah, do, 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 do. Let me just uh, delete that. Just a programming note, we got about 14 minutes left. Yep. Yes, yes, rewind binary. We need to have that at a new context, uh, which is project backend. Add it here. Components inventory. Java, Java 11, and here, okay. And then what I'm going to do from here, I'll go back 
into my topology from the topology. I'm going to, to push it. So it's going okay. to do exactly the same thing with auto. So now we see that there is an inventory which is going to be here up and running. Where's that pod coming from internally? The pod, which pod? Sorry. The, the application pod that's from the binary that you built internally, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's cool. a binary and I push the binary directly into uh, a Java a JDK pod. Mm -hmm. Which is there. And then so it's waiting to start. I don't know why everything is slow right now. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. It's slow because you had to say something to make it move. Yes, I mean, yeah, <laughs> just have to speak and it's fine. So everything should be fine, should be okay. I'm going to add an external route. So and, and this is amazing to me that just all this stuff is just right click there, right click there, right click there. Yeah. Type in what you need, and it's you know off you go. What port do you want it to run on? Common ports are selected for you. The whole nine yards. So now you should have like a good URL for people to see this inventory. Yes, I hope so. Hope so. Yeah. Yes. So now <laughs> the, I don't have the route uh, there, so I'm going to push it here. So it's pushed. It's going and to there's the route. Here, and I click there, and oh. Oh, yeah, the inventory. Should be working. I just need to change because I've changed into my codes. Uh, not this one, not this one. It's this backend. No, not this one. Backend ones. So yeah. it's here. Ah, I got this, but I don't care. Here. Backend slash wines. Yes. Voilà. Ta -da. Which is there. And then I need to share it this with Natalie. The front end. Give me give me this URL. Yeah, give yeah. the data. Yes. Give the data. Give the data. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so here. Developer. So I'm you so have slow. A, don't know oh. why. No, no, no. <laughs> it's just that I don't know why everything <laughs> has gone bad for me and for you everything is fine. But it's, yes, it's no, called the demo the gods. It's called the demo gods. They're, yes, they're, yes. they're frowning on you right now. They're not full on like mad at you. They're just frowning. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> so uh, basically that so I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to yeah. share, give uh, the host. Okay, Natalie, make yep. it happen. Make it happen. Uh, uh, did you did you do it in HTTPS? You know, for course stuff. You don't remember? He did enable uh, course. I don't remember. I uh, enable course, but it should work. Even each HTTP. Uh, Just try it in the parallel. I will uh, change it. No, the, the HTTP doesn't work. Yeah, uh, I can share the that. screen. Share screen. Yeah. Share screen. I will add the HTTP there. So I, I put the, this route here, mm. uh, if you can see my screen. Uh, so component did mount, fetch this URL here. Um, so this is the, the route on the workspace. And I, I don't see anything, but we can investigate in the browser. Uh, we can do from here and uh, the console, console, and content. Yeah. I, yeah, it's better. been blocked. The content yeah. must be served of HTTPS, yeah. Yeah, just, you can add the HTTPS, Natalie. Okay. And in just, some seconds. So what I'm going to do is just to add one uh, parameters uh, into the route uh, because I'm not going to, 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 to so here, here, here. I'm going to add uh, a parameter to the route. 
which mm -hmm. is uh, basically so TLS with uh, termination as edge and to insecure edge uh, termination policy to redirect. So nice. just a few lines that I'm going to add to my route. Okay. Here. Okay, yes, you can try it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, uh, here we go. Yes. Ah, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> let's let's try it out. It's fantastic. Here. Hit refresh. Uh, look at all that wine. Oh, wow! Look at this wonderful. Oh, wine. beautiful, yeah. beautiful selection here. Yeah. So now we we have tested locally, uh, and I can push this uh, to my project. So this that will be actually pushed in an open ship. And this is going to be our interaction uh, uh, front-end, back-end developer working in, in our workspace, working in our project. Then a pipeline, a Tekton pipeline, can build in the same project, all the projects together. We can also um, create uh, the, the environment from the dev file, like Madhu was, uh, was, was sharing before. So let, let's do this quickly so we don't have uh, that much time. So we, we can do everything again. So we have say that we are in open shift here and we can do again auto push and this is gonna find the new change. Actually, I'm wrong because I forgot to, to, to do the, the build. So I am in my React application. I need to build again uh, NPM uh, run build. And so this is gonna create the new static content. I can copy the static content to the, static, to the build folder again. And I can uh, uh, doing uh, auto push to re-trigger again uh, uh, the deployment and open ship. These things that I'm doing manually can be automated with a run task here. I just need to write this on the dev file or configure task here. Uh, so it, it's a very up to us to, to do these things uh, all automatically. So I'm gonna go here, up, and I'm gonna go to. Uh, Build so I can copy in the front end build build copy everything that you find here in the, here okay so now I should have new content here that's great let's cross check the content there the time it's you uh, to see so it should be fine yes okay so i have the new content uh, and i can run again the auto push auto push already the fine not, not oh maybe i because i stopped at the previous one uh let me retrigger again if we go to the topology this is has been i don't know if this is the last version we get. So let's check it out. Yes, try to access it. Uh, no, no, no. This is uh, no. The it's uh, it didn't uh, push the right one. So I can maybe retrigger the push from here. The new task. I uh, say no change detected. Maybe because maybe try to force. Uh, try to do another push minus F just to force. Yeah, just uh, force it. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah. yeah, building again. There you go. That's okay. going to build until yeah, yeah, yeah. that. I hope it will from, be fixed. From the, yeah, I, I hope so. So from the UI, uh, there isn't any way yet to force it. Uh, okay, so let's check if. This is gonna be updated. New listening, perfect. Let's check it out. Oh, cannot get. Cannot get. Cannot get. Some, cannot get. Something. Uh, so how it's okay. Changed. Let's check very quickly. Uh, let's check. So, back so here everything was fine. What we changed was just. Uh, we didn't touch this. Uh, we didn't touch this one really. Uh, so uh, the build directory is the only one that has been new, newly generated. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, 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 uh. 
perhaps this is, you know, something we follow up on is how to package up these environments as we're running out of time here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Uh, something, yeah, we can follow up because we are running uh, out of time. Actually, the content looks. Uh, oh, let me check. So the build directory is empty. That's why. That's a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, let, let's, let's try to fix very, very, very quickly if possible. Uh, build. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, we can cross check here. Source from, from here. So another push here. Uh, sorry, from here. Uh, all the push again. No change. Okay. Use the force flag. Uh, force, yeah. Force again. So okay. let, let's do in, in the meantime, maybe let's uh, wrap up very quickly because uh, so what we experiment, so basically it's really what a uh, developer is going to face on. And uh, everything that we got, so every, let's say, problem uh, that, we, that, that we have so far, it's really related to the code itself and not really about the interaction that we're going to have with the cloud, which means that, of course, the work of the developer is not going to change uh, a lot. You just need have to deal with the same problem, even if you're working basically locally. But as you can see here, so every interaction that we made with OpenShift uh, to create a new database, to get this database, and so on, as you can see, it's going very, very smooth on that. Yeah, so there is not a big change, and of uh, course you also need to you also need to know a bit about uh, OpenShift. So basically, how it's working. So as a user, so in the latest version of OpenShift four, we have this beautiful uh, developer view who simplified a lot of things, and it's with really really focused for developer. And it's really nice with all the topology things, the bubble appears uh, to be able to also investigate because it's also, let's say, the exercise that we that you have seen during this uh, this switch. The fact that yes, we have a bug, we need to looking for work on, on the bug, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's uh, yes, all this experience that we've got uh, with OpenShift, and I really hope in the late. The, the last minute, so Natalie would be able to to fix everything to be able to add the yeah. The I was looking if it running. was some uh, course. You no, just some, your route, yeah. Like your route, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, cool. Uh, it was. Uh, I had to create a secure route um, because you cannot, otherwise, uh, you yeah. cannot access the secure application from an unsecure connection. Yes. Yes. So this is something that we need to care about when we do these things uh, in general. And uh, as you see, from, from the IDE, I was also able to push the code. Uh, so we are, we are running out of time. So, uh, but we, uh, this is an example that we are working two separate projects. Maybe um, Madhu can start here pushing some uh, pull requests uh, on mine. I can do the same on, 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 uh, on its own. And mm -hmm. both together, we can use this def clicking here. This is going to start factory. Uh, if we are allowed to more, uh, for instance, I'm not allowed to, more, to create more than two workspace here. But if we are allowed to create more than two workspace, Madhu can click here, or I can click here, and I can do the same thing. So I will have the same Coready workspace environment uh, inside my project. So. We have two ways to bootstrap the things. Uh, we can bootstrap from the source code with OpenShift with deployment, or we can create a dev file here, and dev file will create this factory, and factory will create basically the same structure that, that we have here. Uh, mostly the same uh, with everything in, on top. We can download the code. So all the work we, we, we made manually, uh, run task, uh, configuration, uh, repository, can be done automatically for the new developer. If there is a new microservices developer, a new backend developer can start from the code ready workspaces dev file. So all the things would be automatic uh, for, for, for him. Exactly. Awesome. Well, with that, thank you very much, Madhu, Natali. This has been a wonderful deep dive, despite the demo gods not smiling upon us completely. 
into how to go from literally nothing to a full blown application, which is some, you know, some wine bottles and a little bit of code. So thank you so much for joining us. We are going to do a hot swap here. Uh, we're going to switch from this stream over to an OpenShift Commons briefing with Termelo Security. So, Madhu, Natali, thank you so much for joining us today. Where can people find you on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn? Where do you want people to reach out to you if they have questions? Yes, on um, um, Twitter or LinkedIn for me. Twitter, Twitter, fine. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, with that, thank you very much gentlemen for thank joining you. thank you all and you, have Chris. a wonderful afternoon evening and day wherever yes. you may be thank you for the invitation thank you for joining bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.